afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. I am Jaya Jesudasan. I'm the executive vice president in charge of doing the design and construction of all the resorts that Melco Resorts and Entertainment undertake, both in Macau and throughout the world. We are a young company, young and energetic, and we are led by a young and energetic uh, chairman and CEO, Mr. Lawrence Hall. <clears throat> we, we are innovative, we have courage, we have diversity, and Melco believe in value of our colleagues, customers, and community. So build our resorts for the community. <clears throat> Macau was transformed since its transfer to China with the opening up of the gaming industry to international competition. The integrated resort operators who came from overseas replicated what they had created previously in the US. Lawrence, on the other hand, wanted to create original and outstanding resorts. Our City of Dreams and Studio City resorts with the House of Dancing Water Theater and the figure of eight Ferris wheel are outstanding. In 2012, we embarked on a mission to select an architect to design a hotel tower on the last piece of land on our City of Dreams site. <clears throat> we were looking for a design that will stand out and will become the symbol of Macau and Melco. And I believe we achieved that with the unique and innovative design created by Madam Zaha Hadid and her team, and the skill of our structural designers, Buro Hapold, and the management and technical skill of our construction managers, Buig. Zaha believed that there should be no limits to experimentation. My challenge was to give enough scope for the designers to experiment while ensuring that we got a, pro a project finished uh, on time and within our established budget. And that we achieved in spite of all the challenges we had during the uh, design and construction stages. So our first contact with Zaha was in 2012 when she did a feasibility study for us on this new hotel complex. And we opened it to the public in the middle of 2018, just six years to do the design, build, and fit out and get it operationally ready as a six-star hotel. <clears throat> and there you have the icon. That's a celebration of Macau and Melco. 
Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone, and thank you to the CTBH to have us here to present this project and for the award. I've been presenting this building three years ago here in Shenzhen, and it was still under construction. And I'm very pleased to be able to present it again with a finished piece that is up to uh, our client expectation, but also us as designers. So why are we here to uh, present this building and is a runner up for the Innovation Award? Um, it's, uh, this is the title of uh, today's presentations. I think there are many, many aspects in which this project has uh, innovate in its own good. And this goes from being the first high rise that has a free form uh, structure exoskeleton is because has um, three uh, sky bridges, is because has uh, five different types of glazing facade, is because it's been designed from the beginning to the final fabrication, all by using parametric design. We have challenged ourselves as a designer, we have challenged Bureau Hapul as engineering, we have challenged our client to follow us and embark in this journey, and I think, to be fair, uh, we succeeded. I mean, the building is not only reflecting our initial design intention, but it's also a true, um, uh, a true uh, representation of uh, the construction industry and the design industry up to this century. So before we go too much into the detail, I just want to break what is this building about. So the building is effectively only 40 uh, levels, and uh, the, the lower part, the podium part, is uh, directly connected to the existing and up and running at the time we set the design uh, COD uh, program. Then we have uh, the, the two towers appearing connected by the sky bridges, uh, the all 780 rooms, and the top of the building is instead dedicated to the villas and uh, high-end gaming facilities. This project would have never been possible if not with a passionate and devoted team of designers, contractor, fabricator. They all believe, despite the difficulties in developing the design, that this could have been done and could have been done now, not in 10 or 20 other years. And the, the team has been, has been scattered around, around the planet. So this was a 24-hour job for all of us that Morpheus never slept, uh, <laughs> if, if I may use the, 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 the similarity. But um, effectively, apart from Zani Darkere, that was the lead designer for the job, we had a great team, both in Hong Kong, uh, in Shenzhen area, uh, for the fabricator, all the way to the States with some of the interior uh, design component. But again, it's not only us, it's not only the designer. And I think I felt really proud when going on site doing construction to see how each one of the workers that had built this building that we see had been contributed to it, how they felt a sense of belonging, a connection to the building itself. So a very big thank you to all of the people that had contributed with heavy work to make this building possible. I will start with how we came about with the idea. Uh, when, again, as uh, um, uh, Jaya Jerusalem uh, did mention, the site was already built and up and running, and we were left with a block, let's say 50 by 100 by 150 in height, to be filled in with a quite demanding amount of GFA. So the first thing was to look at an extruded volume to bring up the maximum allowed area. And we knew that we had to come up with an idea that was not a standard block or a standard building to achieve not only the program distribution that was something very important for the client, but also to bring as much as possible natural light inside the building itself. So we didn't work only with the plane of the facade. We really work in um, breaking up the mass and the volume and creating voids on the facade. So this is Morpheus, the Bill Morpheus that we see now. Out of this quite a straight forward uh, block, uh, they, all of the voids are appearing and they don't stop on the facade. There is also a mass carved out on the roof to allocate for special villas with dual aspect as well as an outdoor swimming pool. So you see in the section how the idea of 
enveloping a void with a building came about. And it wasn't an easy design from the beginning to the end. But at the end, every little piece came into position by working extremely close with all of the engineers as well. So the structure and form are one unique uh, element. We started the first sketch of Morpheus already had an exoskeleton. Of course, it was absolutely not defined uh, at the beginning, but it was already there. And the component of this building are effectively not structure, facades, and interior program. Everything is fused into one. Everything had to talk to each other to be make this building uh, workable and buildable. So the exoskeleton is one of the primary source of uh, the structure of the building. It's connected back through um, a slab and beams into the core. They are allowing for lateral stability of the building. And then it comes the different types of glazing. They are reflecting the program inside, but they also caring for and uh, minimize the use of material on site to build this building. So this is the bridge uh, connecting the two towers in the middle of the building. We looked also at symmetry, and you wouldn't expect this building to have anything to do with symmetry, but instead it's completely specular from south to north facade. There is no such uh, optimization that comes in repeating the two facades if only uh, time and, and a lot of effort from the team to resolve each one of the nodes. So there is a specularity in between the facade that helped uh, the progressing of the building in itself. And those are the two facades. So the appearance, because it's so free form, effectively you don't spot it unless I would have said it to you, you would have never known that those two facades are exactly the same. One important element in the design of this building was to always look what was happening from the inside and the outside of the building. The internal and external facade, the correlation between the two was very much important. So whatever we were doing on the outside of the building with the exoskeleton, the subframes and the macro windows was effectively becoming the internal walls, the internal ceiling, the internal facade of the, all of the spaces of the building itself. So those are the two images, Morpheus from the outside and Morpheus from the inside, from the main atrium. And this all starts by the integration of each one of the program uh, that leads all the way from the Porcocher into the main atrium. The main atrium is a space where you first appreciate what the voids that you have seen from the outside are effectively bringing into the life of the building. It's an area where you get natural light, but it's shaded. Macau has a very, very harsh climate, uh, pretty similar to Shenzhen. So for us, it was important to bring natural light into the space without overeating the space itself. All of the spaces that are component uh, the central spine of the building are effectively studied to have the maximum shading from both the exoskeleton as well from the building form itself. Now, one characteristic, I think, of our office is all, always to look at the different components of the design to make a rationale without copying or repeating the same element throughout. So there is, uh, of course, a, a team here of triangulation that goes from the main exoskeleton all the way down to the way the facade is triangulated. But then it populated, it popul it popul populate also the internal facade of the atrium and uh, the Pierre Hermé pavilion that sits in the main atrium. So this idea that each one of those elements has its own logic, has its own programmatic function, has its own, um, let's say, essence, but yet they are part of one family. So micro and macro in the design of this building have been quite uh, an important thing to a point that uh, even the uh, fire, um, uh, fire detector and fire springers in the main lobby are designed to embed the idea of the same geometry repeated of the quotes or the triangle, but yet bringing it with a new life. And I cannot talk about this project without touching on the idea of movement. Movement in a sense of the use of the lift, and I will show you in a second, but also movement of uh, the space around you. It flows, it effectively envelops yourself, and even if you are quite straight in your position, you will find yourself wonder and discover things that before you didn't spot. 
So movement and light as well. Light as a source of uh, connecting you with the outside, uh, bringing you to a connection with what is happening around you. And this is what is happening. There are two very simple, straightforward concrete cores with six panoramic leaves. The panoramic leaves are uh, moving up and down and bringing you into uh, the view of a section of the building itself. So this is the passing the first void and looking at the ceiling of the first void. So at this level, at level 21, there is the design that we did of the uh, restaurant of uh, a Chinese restaurant, high-end Chinese restaurant. And then again, moving up to the next uh, level of connection that is uh, level 30 with another uh, facilities for um, breakfast and lounge going under the swimming pool where the two towers reconnect to each other and the exoskeleton is always there and all the way up to the, to the swimming pool. So every guest of this building will have the same experience, will experience Morpheus inside out and constantly while traveling up and down the building. So again, um, the lobby space has been a lot of work because it had some stringent requirement from the client. But I think at the end, we did have to adjust ourselves and make sure that all of the requests by the client, that is a very experienced um, um, uh, client when it comes to luxury hotel, and our aspiration of a simple, pure, and quite unique design were respected. This is the design of the restaurant itself. So th there are leaves that are passing by all the time, and we wanted to make sure that there was some privacy. So we designed those cocoon and spaces where uh, people could dine. And again, every single step of the building, it gives you a new experience. This is under the swimming pool where we have the full floor. And again, natural light in this case is coming from below and the open space of the building. So how did we work um, to make the image on the right left that is a rendering to what is now the build building? Um, we work very closely with all of the engineering, contractor, and fabricator that helped us to put this thing together. They were, we did share since the beginning a parametric model that allowed each one of us to input and make changes without, with, with the ability of spotting where were the changes occurring is far beyond what you would call a beam model. It's a very sophisticated tool that we use to translate structural information, design aspiration, uh, as well as fabrication constraint, all in one platform. And this was not off the box. Of course, we had to create it ourselves. It was something that was implemented throughout the life of the building and went from you know, structural to this, our design model to the fabrication of the last bolt of the building. So the bespoke script have really changed the way we were able to deliver this project and produce information for that. And again, looking at the different stages of the fabrication, I think uh, a lot has to be said in the way it was put together by the final fabricators. This is an example of how the panel, they are doubly curved in the belly area, were put together with a mix of very sophisticated CNC machine cutting all the way down to the, the human uh, finding the right angle to, uh, to bend the panel itself. So I like the idea that despite all of the technologies and the intelligence that we have put to come up with uh, a solution for this building, there was a lot of love and a lot of attention on site using also quite basic uh, tools to deliver this project. So I'll leave you now with a video about how Morpheus was constructed and thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you. Thank you.